Well, welcome to another weekly edition of On Point Live. Hi, everybody. I'm Vince Ferragamo, former Super Bowl quarterback, along with Jackie Slater, who is 20-year NFL legend and Hall of Famer. And uh, we're coming to you live from Empower Field, Mile High in Denver, Colorado, where we just saw <laughs> the Denver Broncos take care of what I think that was the Los Angeles Rams. Jackie, I, I don't know who showed up today, but... Hey, hey Vince, you know, anyway, first, 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 Vince, first of all, it's hard to, to to say a different stadium when you're used to seeing and saying Mile High Stadium, right? right. I know, it is, I hear, it is I, different. You know, it's got I hear a new name, Empower Field. But Jackie, the Vince, Mile I, High Stadium is right next to this. Yeah, yeah, it's right next to it. And Vince, I hear they have yeah. a screen there that is huge that the fans just love. It was it was directly in front of us, Jackie. We were uh, privileged to uh, be guests of George Patton, who's the general manager here, and I had a chance to talk to him a bit about for the Denver Broncos and his wife Barbara, so gracious to uh, allow us to come into the suite. And we were in the end zone, and we were had direct view of the, of the uh, I, they call it the Oculus, you know, in SoFi Stadium, but this is a huge screen and it, it's uh, picturesque. It's, it's beautiful. The, the entire stadium was, was rocking and had over 60,000 fans here to watch, uh, to watch pretty much wow. or just take it to the Rams in a 41 to zero lopsided win. But, you know, I, Jackie, just what did you come away with after watching this game? You know, I, I talked to George and basically he said, that you know he attended practice, watched the practice. The Rams really took it to him in practice when they had. That's you know, what Matt I understand. Stafford and and, uh, and Cooper Cup and the rest of the guys were they were kind of concerned that they were going to get blown out. But you know when the, the the other group came in, it was all Denver tonight. And uh, you know I just uh, I've got I've got my take on it. But I first want to go to you, Jackie, and see what you think uh, what the Rams uh, look like and, and how they're going to pick up the slack now and, and get ready for the regular season. Well, I think, I think the most important thing that has to happen right now is that they've got to make great decisions about the people that they're going to keep the guys. None of the starters play tonight. Uh, we're still, uh, got to sort out who's going to be the, the starters on their offensive line, but make no mistake about it. I, I agree 100% with uh, general manager, Les Sneed's comments after the game when he said, you know, you look at this game and it is no indication of how the last two uh, sessions with two different teams went during the course of the week. They had a great mm -hmm. deal of success with their starters versus one with their ones versus other teams once two weeks in a row. They completely expected to come in here and play at a level that was uh, that was a uh, very, very high as they always anticipate doing. And uh, that just didn't happen. And, and, and that was primarily because of the lack of experience, Vince. Uh, I think the Rams have a very good nucleus of leaders, uh, guys that's going to be leading this team. And I, and I really don't want to put too much weight on what happened, uh, what happened tonight. I mean, that was not very um, – <laughs> we did, that wasn't a Sean McVay coached football team relative to the effort and the understanding of the schemes, both defensively, offensively, and special teams-wise. So I think we can expect a whole lot more than what we saw tonight. And I think George George made a really good comment too, Jackie. He said, you know, the preseason is a time to evaluate talent out there, and uh, they've got a lot of work to do now. They have to sit down and they have to release about 37 players from their squad. And, uh, you know, a lot of these guys are fighting to, to keep a position, to keep a job. And, you know, some will be relegated to the practice squad, but, uh, you know, their 53-man roster is going to have to be cut down. So there's going to be some tough decisions. Some players will probably get picked up on other teams. But, uh, you know, from what I saw, I, I, I saw Denver is a different uh, chemistry. The, the chemistry that Sean Payton has brought together um, with their philosophy, with their style of play, uh, they were getting after the Rams, of course, uh, you know, running the football. But, but throwing the ball, Jackie, they had the protection for the quarterback. Again, that's kind of been reminiscent in the last three games. But guys were running wide open in the secondary. They were that every time. I mean, if he looked to um, number 17, the Jordan Humphrey, if they looked at him, he would be open every time he ran a route. He was number 17. 
And, you know, I mean, if I was a quarterback, I'd just throw him every down. But not only he was getting open, they they were coordinating their pass offense where everybody was running 100 percent, going full steam. And there was always one, sometimes two or three receivers open on a lot of routes. It doesn't bode well for a defense when you when it's that easy picking for an offense to 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 complete passes down the field. And then on, you know, on the Rams side, I, you know, I, I, I saw a couple of bright spots. Obviously, I, I saw Deswan Johnson. I don't know why they haven't been playing anymore, but he got in there, almost made a sack on the quarterback and disrupted the play. And all couple of a sudden, of things turned around for the Rams. Yeah, a couple times. And then he had a goal line stand, Jackie, down at the goal line. He made a great stand to stop the touchdown run. And then, you know, but he played very sparingly. So I... I thought he was. I thought he looked good, and then the, the one long pass too, which was uh, that was uh, Austin right. Trammell. Well, that was a nice play. I mean, but not a whole lot of bright spots. But that was that's kind yeah. of that was uh, my take from what I saw tonight. Well, you know, when I when I assessed uh, the Rams and I events, I looked at a couple of areas. First of all, Deshaun Johnson, uh, Mister Irrelevant. He did have some uh, a couple of bright spots where he was uh, in the backfield on the quarterback. But also Copeland and uh, Nick Hampton, uh, they contributed as pass rushers. Uh, as you know, knowing me, Vince, as an offensive lineman, you know that I was watching that very closely. And uh, I can't say I can't say that I expected um, much more than what than what we actually saw. Uh, they weren't playing their starters. They 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 played. Um, there were a couple of guys that stood out to me. Uh, McClendon, who, who played some tackle, who was basically a guard, and Akuri, who was their left tackle. They those guys uh, performed performed quite well, I thought, at times. Consistent. I know um, Curie jumped off. Akuri jumped off sides one time, but that some of that's to be expected in, in the preseason. Uh, when I looked at Stetson Bennett, I, he threw a couple of picks, but you know he's still you know working in progress, and we don't anticipate him playing you know, a whole lot with Matthew Stafford in the starting lineup. And so it was probably good for Sean McVay to find out what his strengths were so that they could play to his strengths if they have to go to him, you know, as a backup. Now, Vince, the other thing that we were watching closely and trying to figure out was how their special teams was going to be. Now, their special teams, Vince, uh, you know, they had to replace uh, their punter, they had to replace their kicker, and they had to replace their deep snapper. And, you know, the guys who who played, you know, you know, they had, to, you know, they were, they were up and down here and there. I, I think one of the bright spots for the special teams uh, certainly is the punter. Uh, the punter is um, his name is uh, Ethan Edwards, Evans, and he averaged he's going in, in this preseason. He was averaging 53 yards uh, per punt, second in the NFL. He had five punts inside the 20. And he had over 700 yards. Now, the only thing with him is the guy's leg is so strong that he's got to learn to get some height. He's got to learn to get some height on his punts because otherwise uh, he's going to outpunt coverage and guys are going to get good returns. So, Jackie, as we saw this game tonight, what was your take from uh, the Rams in totality? I mean, you, you mentioned some of the good things, some of the bright spots you saw. But what were some of the other uh, uh, impressions you got from this game? Well, it was clear to me, Vince, that uh, that that football team in Denver was a lot more uh, mature, a lot more seasoned when it comes to playing in the National Football League. In fact, if you had taken a look closely, you would saw you would have seen that they started their left tackle was Cam Fleming. Now, Cam Fleming is not their left tackle. He's been in the league ten years, but he played left tackle for them. So it was the equivalency of having a veteran starter. Uh, going against the Rams pass rushes off of the right side over there. So when I looked at some of the key matchups uh, that were in this game, I thought that Tomlinson started the game well, playing aggressively uh, out of TCU, the, the corner that they have. Uh, he just, his inexperience manif- manifested itself when he grabbed the guy by the face mask and got kicked out of the game and didn't get to finish and getting those valuable reps. But, I mean, all across this team, if you look at it, knowing that they didn't have the, the starting offensive line out there, as I said, they had McClendon, who normally is a guard, playing some tackle, and they had a Curie uh, playing left tackle, which I thought both those guys d- did an admirable job. 
uh, considering that they're not going to be the starters, that they're backup guys. Stetson Bennett, well, he, you know, Stetson Bennett, he threw two picks and he didn't look, uh, I mean, he didn't look bad. He made a couple of poor decisions. And I think that you have to figure that uh, he's going to have the opportunity to play to his strengths. I don't, I can't see Sean McVay putting him in a situation where he'd be expecting him to do the same things that the starting quarterback is going to do. So, but some of the positives, Vince, were their deep snapper, Alex Ward. We were expecting them to replace uh, their deep snapper, Matthew Orzich, who left and went to Green Bay, and they did that. He did a good job on the snaps. Uh, I think their their punter, uh, their punter, he he did a pretty good job. Uh, he Ethan Evans. Ethan Evans is second in the yeah, National Football League. Uh, second in the National Football League uh, with. Um, with punt average at 53.5. Problem is, he outpunts the coverage sometimes. So you can see where some of those things uh, that a seasoned player would do just weren't occur- occurring. And they, they're they probably going to get better and better with time. So I don't think what we saw tonight was indicative of what we're going to see during the regular season when Sean McVay is calling the plays, when his defensive coordinator Raheem Morris is calling the plays. I think we're going to see a much different uh, football team. Because that team competed well for the last two weeks, um, you know, when they had to combine scrimmages against those two teams. I, I uh, happen to have the same sentiments that you had, Jack. We did see some some good things out there. I think in the passing game for some of the young quarterbacks like Stetson Bennett, um, I I like I like his calmness about the way he directs the team, um, his confidence that he has. Some of these problems that arose tonight were because of the lack of timing with the receiver. There were some routes that were run that could have been more crisply run, uh, maybe shorter in uh, length. And, you know, the couple of one pass that was picked off was uh, a a little bit too deep of a route. Uh, The other routes, you know, it's just a matter of timing. And and that's that's something that quarterbacks learn in time. And that's uh, something that we're going to see happen especially when now Sean McVay is going to have more effect and more uh, more say-so in, in the direction of the offense, especially headed into the regular season. So um, I'm not so concerned about that. And I think Rippon played, you know, he's he's a decent quarterback. He's, he's coming along. And, you know, so they, they need to keep these guys in the loop because you have to have that depth at every position. And the receivers, I sometimes, you know, Davis Allen, sometimes he, he, he looks great, but you really have to be aware of the entire situation. A lot of times he's running deeper down the field. If he just turns around, he's wide open. Um, so this coordination has got to come together. And, you know, what we saw from Denver, the way they were crisp, their routes were run so crisp. Everybody was working hard to get open. Uh, the ball was coming out on time. They were running. A, they had a great sense of screens that they called. Uh, their interjection Excellent. with their run game and their pass game. Yeah. So I think, you know, I, I think a lot of that is stemming from, you, you know, the philosophy and the, uh, you know, what, what they're going on there. You know, what, what, what they're doing in practice, how bringing this team along, what's important to them. So, um you know, and so, you know, we're, we're headed into the regular season now, Jack. The preseason's all over. We're going to see Sean McVay get back to the starters, you know, and they uh, I would have liked to see him play a little bit because around the league we're seeing a lot of guys playing a little bit more in preseason. Um, and, uh, right. But we did see some good things from their offensive line play, Jackie, and, and I think that's just going to grow. That's going to become more prevalent as you see the season progress along. And, you know, the Rams are just going to have to just – you know, dig down deep right now, get their experienced players back in the lineup, and that's going to make a big difference. That'll make a big difference too. And uh, but you know, all in all, I think you know, you know, this is a young team. This is going to be a young team moving forward, and uh, there's going to be some growing pains, as we both said. And I think some, uh, you know, hopefully down the road they'll start to open things up a little bit more, and then start to impress more and more as we go. Well, the the other thing, Vince, you have to factor is that. Uh, Sean Payton is is no peon. Sean Payton is one of the best 
football coaches in the National Football League. He's he's one of the best football coaches we've seen over the last, over the last few decades. I mean, that's this guy is special. And and then you 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 complement his expertise with the staff that he put together and his wherewithal of understanding how to build a team. You have to conclude that much of what he much of what he was doing, you know, was was supreme. And 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 he it was supreme, and he had veteran players. So you know when I looked at uh, when I looked at actually did, what they actually did, I thought what they what they did was they got a lot of experience uh, for some young guys this preseason. The one or two or three or maybe five or ten that they have to depend on as this season goes along, and so that's going to be critical to be able to come in off the bench as a young uh, player. Uh, after watching Cooper Cup and Matthew Stafford and 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 Rob Havenstein, watching these guys conduct themselves like the pros that they are, you're going to get better performances from the young guys. And, you know, Vince, you remember when we were young and starting off, we didn't understand the intensity of playing in a National Football League regular season game until we had been in two or three of them. And once we got into two or three of them, we we realized that we had to turn our game up physically, mentally, everything else. I mean, these these players right now, they're not they they never even had the opportunity to play outside the confines of what a coach asked them to do. And in order to do that, to have some success, you have to be veteran enough to know when you're gambling and when you're not. And none of that has even entered the minds of these young guys who are only thinking about doing their assignments as hard as they can. So there's a lot of growth that's going to take place. And I, I expect, remember we said this off season that the first piece that had to fall in place was that they had to get uh, Sean McVay back on board and committed to this team, this organization. I think they did that. And Sean McVay is going to build a, a roster that's going to be competitive. I think you and I both know that. We've com- we've concluded that about him as a coach. And now it's just going to be a matter of them selecting the guys on, for the active roster, the young guys for the active roster that are showing the quickest growth, the most um, – uh, understanding of what they're being asked to do on either side of the ball, and then rolling with the veterans they have and plugging these young guys in a little bit at a time as the season goes along. Well, that, that's uh, that's definitely the key, Jackie. And you know, some of these guys, these young guys, hopefully they'll be able to make a contribution to this team. But as you mentioned, uh, Sean Payton is uh, is no slouch. I mean, he's uh, he's a Hall of Fame type of coach. And you could basically see their entire team was manifesting the works that he does behind the scenes. Okay. It was like, that's Sean Payton out there. That This team, I can understand why these are so successful, these plays. They just don't happen. There, there's no, you know, there's a lot of rhyme to reason why they happen the way they do. And, you know, his uh, diversity of, of play calling, uh, what he was able to do, both offensive, defensively, special teams, he's putting it together. He's putting it together, and, you know, that AFC West is going to be stacked again this year. Jackie, they got the Chargers, you have the the Broncos, the Raiders, and also the Chiefs. So they open there's uh, Seattle, a lot you of open up with Seattle. Yeah, the, the Rams will open up with Seattle in the NFC West, and uh, that'll be a good test for San them. San Francisco is going to come out. Yeah, they're going to be ready to run the football, Jackie. You know they are. Yeah, San they, they, they open up with Seattle. Yeah, they, they open do. Up with the Seattle. Rams do. They play the San, Fr- San Francisco 49ers and then the Cincinnati Bengals. So they have got to make sure that the young people that they keep are going to be guys who can come in and be adequate backups, Vince, because right out of the chute, some of the best teams in the league they're going to be dealing with. And these guys are probably looking – after they watch this film, they're going to be licking their chops. Uh, you know, wanting to get out to some of these young, inexperienced guys who big and talented, make no mistake about it, they can all run, they can all, they all fit the measurables. But the one thing that you can't factor in is the inexperience right now. And that's that's the thing that's going to be interesting to see how it, how quickly they can get these guys playing at a different level. Well, we've seen uh, Sean McVay uh, pull these, uh, these uh, tricks before in the past, Jen. I don't know if he's setting people up, but um, he's certainly going to have something in store when he plays Seattle in two weeks, and and they're going to have to they're going to have to come out of the shoot fired up and ready to go. And I, I think you'll see a much different team than you saw tonight. But 
uh, again, they're going to have to make well, these cuts. Vince, Jackie, that's a big deal. Vince, well, yeah. when you put Cooper Cup, when you put Cooper right. Cup and Tyler Higby and Rob Havenstein oh, yeah. on the field, that, that's a difference right there. Yeah. You see? That's so true. That, that right there, I mean, I, I don't see anybody blowing the Rams out by scores like they did tonight because the Rams are going to put points on the board. There's no doubt about that. Mind. Oh, yeah. And the thing that I'm going to be a little bit concerned about is, you know, how McVay uh, moderates his approach to play calling. Because one of the things that I think he's done a fantastic job with over the last few years, Vince, is, is clock management. I mean, he will take a shot. And he'll try to, you know, take advantage of somebody that can't cover down the field, certainly with, with with the best of them. But if you think about it, how many 15, 16 play drives have we seen uh, Sean McVay orchestrate with no panic in anyone's mind as they slowly move the ball down the field, controlling the clock, keep, keeping it away from their opponent, and ultimately getting points? That's the kind of team that 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 I'm expecting to see, you know, once once this regular season starts. Right, and, and uh, Jackie, that's that's the truth. You want to get these guys as much play time, especially the younger guys. Obviously, they've had a lot of play time in the preseason. Uh, they they really take the lead to the, some of these veteran players, and they got to look at practice, see how they're performing, and how they're going to come back. And so right. we're going to see uh, we're going we're going to see a different team, obviously, coming up pretty soon. And so uh, time is uh, time will tell here soon. And in a couple of weeks, you know, they'll uh, we'll be up in Seattle and uh, we'll see what uh, the Rams can pull off. And I'm sure they're going to have a lot of surprises for the Seahawks come that day. You know, so you know that. Yeah. And, and the other thing, Vince, that we have to factor and, 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 and sometimes we were a little critical of McVay in the preseason, but the guy doesn't show his hand. And if you think yeah. he hasn't been, if you think he's not aware and hasn't been watching the Seattle Seahawks in their preseason games, for the last three weeks, we'd both be out of our mind because Sean McVay probably knows the Seattle Seahawks right now better than any coach sure that they're going He's to play them enough time they're... so far. So, yeah, that's so, true. I mean, the guy's going to have a game plan. I mean, it's going to it's, it's going to be successful. And the people that he put on the field to execute his game plan, they're going to know enough to do their jobs. All you got to do is think about Baker Mayfield of a year ago, how he came in and, you know, in four days, he executed at the quarterback position well enough at what he was asked to do uh, for the, in order for them to win a game, and he hadn't been there a week yet. It speaks well, volumes anything of, can happen, about Jack, You know that. In the NFL, anything can happen. So we're, uh, you know, you got to prepare yourself. You got to get ready because any in any given week, if you're not ready to go, disaster could strike. So, but the Rams, the Rams obviously will go up uh, up north and be prepared in two weeks for all our Ram fans. Uh, we're wishing them the best of luck up there to start the season off. And the slate is clean now. There's uh, Everybody's back to 0-0. Zero, zero. And we hope that uh, we now can start to uh, to shine, Jackie. And, you know, we're we're uh, former alumni, so we always pull them for the Rams, and we want to see, see them do well. So, uh, Absolutely. But you know what? I'm, I can't wait to get back home, Jackie. This Denver. Denver was great up here. It's uh, The weather's been nice. But, uh, you know, looking forward to coming back home and uh, – and hook Aren't you going to a baseball see, game? Yeah, we're gonna go see the Rockies on Monday night. They're gonna play the Atlanta Braves, Jackie. And you know oh, what? Well, we're staying. We're, we're right. We're right in the thick of things here. We can almost walk through either stadium. So they're all pretty right? close wow. together. Yeah, it's pretty nice. But well, listen. Anyway, we'll listen, have to come back you, uh, and uh, we'll come back and do an interview with George uh, Patton pretty soon one day, Jackie. And we'll come back here and uh, maybe if the Rams play them down the road. We'll come back to watch the Rams play them in the regular season, and maybe we'll turn right, the tide. I, I, yeah, I really want to get a look at that. I really want to get a look at that huge uh, screen that they have there. I yeah, that, that screen that. is uh, that jumbotron. I don't even know what they call it here, but it's it's pretty exciting. It, I don't know if you can see it behind me, but it's uh, it's back there in the corner. So, but they, anyway, they kept so, it all game. Long. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna hide. I'm I'm not I'm wearing all my uh, my Rams colors over here, Jackie. So I'm gonna sneak out of here <laughs> and uh, get, get back home because there's a lot of Bronco fans over here. This place was packed over sixty thousand people in here, but uh, they had something to cheer about tonight. But uh, they hope they hope they'll be ready to go in a couple of weeks too when they when they face off their start start their season. So, but for all of us here at uh, 
uh, at the Manhattan Beach Studios back home. And for Jackie Slater, I'm Vince Ferragamo. We want to hope you continue to subscribe to our On Point channel, On Point Live with Vince and Jackie. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram. So until next time, Jackie, stay, stay on, on point. point.